Hey, it's Jordan with 2IT, just uh, outside Bernie's Barn Burner uh, here in Times Square. I'm here with uh, the legendary creator of Gasland, Josh Fox. Yeah. I tell you, I watched your documentary years ago and I almost threw up when the fire came out of the sink. Jesus Christ. It was incredible work and unfortunately our politicians still need a kick in the ass. Um, you have a new uh, film coming out on HBO on Monday. That's right. Uh, tell me about it. Well, the new film's called How to Let Go of the World and Love All the Things Climate Can't Change. It's the longest title in documentary history, probably. Um, it's on HBO on Monday night. It's about climate change. Um, I've been uh, camp touring with it all over the, the country in support of the grassroots effort of people fighting fossil fuel infrastructure on the ground. So they're, whether they're fighting fracking or fighting pipelines or fighting power plants or, um, you know, or, or fighting onshore drilling or fighting offshore drilling, we've been showing the film in those communities, touring all across America, kind of in a way parallel to the campaign because I'm also a Bernie surrogate. There is only one candidate who is anti-fracking. Who is it? But here it is finally going on TV, on HBO, I couldn't be more happy. It'll be in 40 million homes on Monday night at nine. And um, tell me, you've obviously like kind of blew the lid off of fracking and Gasland One. Um, is this, is, is, are we gonna see a lot of, are we gonna see a lot of fracking uh, kind of follow up in this? Or this is more about the whole shebang of well, climate change? I, let me tell you something. Every time Bernie Sanders says we need to ban fracking, I, I cannot conceal the smile and the cheer that's on my face. Boy, I love to hear Bernie Sanders talk about <laughs> fracking. And at the beginning of our film, um, it actually starts with a victory dance of me at 4 o'clock in the morning at, after we banned fracking in the upper Delaware River Basin in Pennsylvania, which is part of the watershed for New York City, right? So the movie starts with this enormous celebration of our win on fracking here in this area. Um, but then I quickly realized because I look around, and when you look up after a big victory, you see something in a different way. The forest all around me up, upstate is dying. The hemlock trees are dying. They're dying of a parasite called the woolly adelgid that's advancing up the coast every year as the climate gets warmer and warmer. We don't know what our east coast forest looks like without hemlock trees. And then New York City gets clobbered by Hurricane Sandy. It's a one-two punch that teaches me that, you know, even though we can beat the frackers in our own backyard, and we can beat them in New York State, we might lose everything, well, we, we will, we could lose everything we love to climate change. And that sets me off on a journey all across the world. So I go to the Amazon um, to um, investigate oil spills in the deepest jungle with indigenous um, environmental monitors, uh, to China, where the pollution situation, you, you'll never believe, it's absolutely horrific. If we were in Beijing right now, you couldn't see down the end of this block because the pollution is so bad and meet with people who are speaking out, even at risk of their own civil liberties uh, being taken away from them against the, the climate situation uh, and the pollution situation in China to the South Pacific with the Pacific climate warriors who are this band of warriors from 12 different island nations who blockade coal ships that are the size of the Empire State Building in hand-carved indigenous canoes. So it's like, it's like an action-adventure movie more than it is a, a, like a, a dull treatise on the climate. It goes to six continents all over the world, 12 countries. Um, and like I said, we've been showing it kind of parallel to what's going on with the primaries. And every single night, we, we have a dance party that erupts in the audience at the end. The last sequence is a dance sequence as well. And every single place we've gone, including Boise, Idaho, and some of the places in central PA that don't look like they've had a dance party in you know, 50 years, we get up and we dance with the people at the end of this film, and it is re-energizing. Um, and it talks about how climate is not just one issue. Climate change is about institutionalized racism. Climate change is about economic and, and social inequality. Climate change is about population and uh, the food that's on our table. Um, and that's what this film ends up being about. It's about all those issues uh, at, at once. And, and, you know, I'm very, very proud of it. I think it's, um, it's, I think it's the most extraordinary project I've ever had a chance to be a part of because the climate warriors around this world who are fighting you know, at pain of losing their lives, at pain of losing their civil liberties, are the most inspiring people I've ever met in my life, you know? And, and it's just an astounding thing to be a part of. Now, let me ask you, because uh, Bernie does not care about what the normal pol politics would say. Right. This is a speech that says, all right, I might not be president, but I'm, I'm, I'm continuing on. Uh, you have in the general election now, one candidate who says climate change is a hoax, another one who talks se out of seven sides of her mouth on fracking, on climate change. Um, how, how, how do we make sure that basically fracking, climate change, doesn't become, you know, a little two second thing in, the, in a general election debate? Can I tell you something? It's also part of my job. I'm on the New York platform committee. Oh, really? I'm, yeah, you have two out of the five delegates, delegates from the New York uh, platform committee from Bernie right here. Um, so it's my job to insist 
on a ban in fracking in the Democratic National um, Convention, the Democratic National Platform. So we're going down to Orlando, we're going to haggle it out, we're going to Philly, I'll be on the inside. What I'm hoping is that there's hundreds of thousands of people yeah, outside the convention. Let's keep it real. They, they take that platform and they wipe their ass with it. Well, no, so here's the, thing. here's the thing, that this movement on fracking has never paid attention to what the politicians were saying in the mainstream, has never paid attention to the odds. You know, eight years ago, they told us, ah, you'll never get a ban fracking in New York State. That train has left the station. There's no way. It's inevitable. It's not going to happen. Well, guess what? Seven years later, the people and the people's revolution proved them wrong. And here in New York State, when Bernie Sanders was campaigning in Binghamton, and I had the honor of introducing Bernie, he un unleashed a speech on fracking that I've been waiting to hear from a major political figure for years and years and years. And he talked about how there's air pollution and, air and water contamination and how it causes climate change. And he uh, correctly attributed the ban on fracking in New York State, not to the governor, right? Hillary Clinton called it Governor Cuomo's fracking ban. No. It's the people's fracking ban. It was the people's fracking ban in Vermont. It's the people's fracking ban in four municipalities in Colorado, in two counties in New Mexico, in places all across California. Germany just yesterday banned fracking. We have a ban on fracking in France, a ban on fracking in parts of South Africa, and Australia, and Bulgaria, and Romania. I could go on and on. In the Netherlands, I could go on and on. Because the people have risen to that challenge. What I'm saying is, if I'm going to be a delegate on the inside of the, uh, of the DNC, I'm going to be one voice out there arguing about climate, arguing for a karma tax, arguing against, uh, for a ban on fracking. But I need hundreds of thousands of people outside the convention who are going to be watching our live streams. Who, When we say the, the ban on fracking vote is happening now, that's your chant right now. That's what we need. This, people are talking about this convention as our Woodstock. And that's what it's going to be. It's going to be a peaceful revolution in the streets. And you know, I don't count the man out. I don't count out. and I Because this has been the wackiest election in history and I think it's going to get wackier from here and I wouldn't count some it you got inside info I don't have any inside info I just have my instincts my instincts as a reporter told me there was something wrong with fracking and I was right and I went and interviewed people all over this country my instincts are telling me right now that there's something majorly wrong with the Democratic primaries, right? A lot of people won't speak about the fact that there are exit polls that show that we're four points apart here in New York State, and then all of a sudden the vote comes vote comes in well, I've been 13 points different. I've been speaking for a week about these memos that nobody wants to talk about, showing collusion, showing the DNC doing work for Hillary Clinton a year ago. Oh, well, absolutely. And that has to be investigated. And there are reporters who will investigate it. The question is, will it happen in time? The point is, I don't know. What I know is this. What the man said tonight was very inspirational and beautiful. He had all these candidates up on the stage. He said 20,000 people answered the call to take back our government because the revolution doesn't stop. What can I as an individual do to stop the biggest, most powerful industry on the face of the earth from destroying everything that I love and everything that I know? And the answer is, as an individual, not very much. Fracking activism and climate activism and democracy is a team sport. It's something we have to do together. We are a campaign of movements. The fracking movement, the climate movement, the labor movement, Black Lives Matter, Idle No More, the Fight for 15, LGBTQ. <laughs> I'm sorry. LGBTQ. Um, and honestly, we have been so focused on the language and the program of elections that we forgot that we're movements. And we need to focus on the language and the program and the agenda and the tactics of movements. What are those? That's protest, that's civil disobedience, that's taking it to the streets, that's making our point in ways just like is happening on the floor of the house right now where there's a sit-in and finally, you know, they're taking a stand on gun uh, control. What we need to do as the people is take a stand on fracking, take a stand on climate and fight for renewable energy jobs and do all the things that we know America is capable that the establishment is holding us back from. That's what this campaign is about. And if I might say, um, you know, that's what I've been chronicling for eight years in Gasland, in Gasland Part 2 and in this new film. I have, I have tried to make these films about the grassroots and we have given them to the grassroots. I personally, I know what Bernie's talking about, I have toured to 450 cities 
in the last eight years. 450 cities all over the world. And I have met this movement on fracking and this movement on climate. And I have documented it, and that's what's in the film. And it is the most inspirational thing you could ever see. If you want to understand where we are as a people right now, who is winning the actual philosophical debate? There's no question, it's the, it's the positions of the political revolution as articulated by Bernie Sanders, but also by, as articulated by all these climate leaders all across, all across the world. Um, it, is, it is truly an amazing moment to be alive. So, you know, I completely hear you. Yeah, the papers don't matter, the, what the democratic establishment will do. We must be the government. We are the government, you know? I always, I rankle just a little bit every time when someone says the power always comes from the bottom up. Because the truth of the matter is the people are the top. The bottom are the politicians in Washington who take money from the NRA, who take money from the big oil industries, who take money from the ph pharmaceutical companies. They are the bottom because that is the lowest of the low. That is as low as you can get. When you sell out your constituents for the, for the, for the big corporations, even though you know you're poisoning your grandchildren, you're, you're inhibiting a future of, with a habitable planet. That is the lowest of the low. So I would say the people are at the top, not the bottom. At least they are here in New York City. Well, I got to take a break from all this movement because I got to watch a show on Monday. So Monday, HBO. Night, HBO uh, give, me, give me the name one more time. It's called How to Let Go of the World and Love All the Things Climate Can't Change. The things that climate can't change are our civic virtues. One of them is revolution. Please take a look. How the hell could you not watch that? I want to watch it right now. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah.